Another somewhat horror-related pickup, I got the Deluxe Special Edition Stranger Things DVD from Target that looks like good old VHS. I couldn't resist. It's stupid, but I had to have it. And in case anybody was wondering, once I got it out of the shrink wrap, it actually does open up like a real VHS. And then you have the box that contains your DVDs in it, or Blu-ray, or whatever this is. So, opens up. So you got Blu-rays up here, and then DVDs behind it. And then you got a limited edition poster, a sticky note looking thing that says, Friends Don't Lie. And then what's actually a pretty badass poster with the Demogorgon on it. Nice. All right, got another unboxing today, or more like an unenveloping. All right, so not necessarily horror related, but monster related. I got in this signed photo by suit actor Iseo Zushi, I think is how you pronounce his name. But he played Godzilla in the 1974 film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, which is one of my favorite Godzilla movies and one of my earliest Godzilla movies I ever watched. And I've never seen anything of the actor coming to the U.S. And I saw online somebody had these available. They're certified to be, you know, real and all that good stuff. So I went ahead and picked one up for myself. So that's him in the Godzilla suit, I guess. But there's also Mechagodzilla and King Caesar, which made this print even more interesting to me. So very happy to get my hands on this. And it actually, Flossie's Gifts actually sends it with kind of a COA type thing telling you about how he signed it, where he signed it, a little information on the actor and all that stuff. So I'm gonna get this framed soon and have it on display. Hey, cool, you can't even see me on here from what I can tell. But right now I am proving that I am a complete idiot, which if my YouTube channel hasn't proven that already, I don't know what will. But last week I was in Denver, Colorado for the Denver Maker Fair, more specifically, spark fun avc's combat robots and now less than a week after that i am back in florida heading down to orlando again for the orlando maker fair and it's combat robot event i didn't really have much time at all to fix robots in between both weeks so they're both running pretty ragged for this event so we'll see how that goes it's kind of funny though, because I was thinking this morning, oh cool, you're doing another vlog with another robot event, rather than the horror stuff you plan to deliver this month. And it feels like a microcosm for my life on YouTube lately. It's like, I want to put out stuff based on the content I intend to provide on this channel, but then robots tend to supersede everything and I end up just doing that crap. So. Hopefully I can include enough horror stuff in this vlog that this won't just be robots like crazy. I think last week's vlog was more Casa Bonita than anything. But still, we'll see how this goes. So I feel like I failed at filming much of anything today at the robot event. And once again, I'm filming in like near total blackness, but it's only like 9.30. I'm so freaking wiped out from day one of the robot event. I am just sitting here in bed watching Phantasm 4, because that's about all I feel like doing right now. Uh, it was not a good day at the robot event. I got my ass handed to me repeatedly. Uh, so far I've won one fight. My robot F-13 with the machete did manage to get incredibly lucky and win one match, mostly by accident and failure on the other robot's part, not through my own skill, but then got its butt kicked later because in that first fight it blew out a motor so it could only drive on one side. And then my three pound robot lost two matches in a row, getting pretty eviscerated both times. So uh, yeah, we'll see what day two holds, but Things aren't looking up for my success at this event.
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That is a wrap on Maker Fair Orlando. That was a stressful couple of days, especially after just getting back from Colorado on Monday. There was just probably more than I should have done to myself for my own sanity's sake. But it was very, very fun. There's not many events in the world at this point that run the large 220 pound robots. And to have one two hours from home, I feel like I gotta go. Plus, there are some people going that are local that I haven't seen in a long time. Some people that used to be local that I haven't seen in quite a while. It was good to catch up with. So yeah, I believe as of my last video, when I was giving an update, I said my three pounder had lost two fights in a row. To try to make myself feel better, I will state that the two robots that beat me ended up getting first and second place. So at least I fought the best, at least at this event. And my 15 pound robot lost one of its drive motors in the first fight, the only fight it won lost the second fight and then I got it going this morning. I got a replacement Frankenstein together gear motor in there and it worked for about half a fight and then a nice little plume of smoke came jutting out the top of my robot and that was all she wrote for that Frankenstein motor. It completely seized up on me and the motor just killed itself. So I was back to having one wheel drive had another fight that was more just boring. I couldn't really do much. And then I was supposed to fight another really simple robot, one that wasn't so dangerous. Two robots I fought on day one were probably the tougher or more dangerous robots of the event. And the first one being a spinner, which was the one that I won against by sheer luck. And then now in my crippled state, I ended up getting paired up against the spinner again as a time filler before I was out of the competition. I probably should have said no and actually had the real fight that I was supposed to have but he hit me once on the wheel and completely destroyed my one working motor. And that was it, I had to forfeit my last match, which really sucks. But it is also an excuse to go and get new parts to rebuild the robot for next time, so that's gonna happen. At least I hope it does. But that's it for now, I'm heading home. I'm very excited to head home. Probably end up going to sleep as soon as I walk in the door at this rate. So, since I'm going to be wearing this to Spooky Empire this coming weekend for the horror convention, I decided I would get my Part 3 Jason costume back out and make sure everything is together. The only thing missing here right now are the boots, but they're dirty because I wore them to the robot event, so I'm just going to not put them on the bed. But anyway, basically it's a pretty simple costume. Basically silver, or I think they're actually considered silver or gray, Dickie's work pants. I did weather them up kind of poorly. <laughs> it's a little uh, obviously just paint smeared on there, especially around the bottom. I'm not really satisfied with this at all. I did do the rip in the knee, which kind of worked out weird for me because that's the knee that I have tattooed. So you see a Japanese tattoo sticking out from Jason's knee. I'm sure that's movie accurate. And then I just have a green Dickies work shirt, which I bloodied up as well. I think the blood came out better on there. It's more subtle off camera. It looks like bright glaring red on the camera, but it's really not that bad in person. And then underneath I just have a white shirt. I did do some blood splatter on there as well, but nothing too crazy and really just up around the collar because it's really the only place you'll see it. And then I have my hood. This is from DSS Masks, Dark Side Studios, if I remember right. Really like this hood. It's pretty comfortable to wear. They're just kind of hard to get on, but that's what to be expected with a latex hood. But it does have some great detail in it. I guess the only other complaint I could say about it is that the ears are solid. There's no holes in them. And it's really hard to hear when you have this mask on. And then over here, I have my JDF Studios Part 3 blank that I painted up myself. I never fixed the crackling paint issue, but I kind of like it now. I've kind of grown accustomed to how that came out. And I think it works. And then last but not least, we have the axe. I decided to go for an axe over a machete because to me that's kind of a more definitive part three weapon for multiple reasons. But it's actually a real wooden axe handle I got from Home Depot. Once again, I did weather it up. And then uh, foam floor mats cut into the shape of an axe. This is the second attempt I've had at it. I still want to do it at least one more time just to try to seal up some of these edges. 
the top and bottom and back aren't too great. You can definitely tell it's multiple foam mats together. From the side, I think it looks pretty decent. I think the color is pretty good on it. The weathering's okay. Overall, it works for what I want it to work for. And then it's nice and con safe being all squishy here instead of an actual axe. So that's it. That's the costume. I'm actually already signed up for a photo op with CJ Graham in his part six costume. So I might wear this to that and just have a picture of a fat part three versus the real part six. So I'm watching Tales of Halloween, one of my new favorite uh, finds for horror movies. Or I guess I found it a couple years ago. But I'm working on this. This is going to be for a uh, Halloween decorating contest at work. And I have this, they called it a bag of bones from Target. It's kind of random uh, skeleton parts. So uh, I'm kind of assembling them, but they actually had femurs instead of upper arms. But I'm just kind of going with it. And I'm using a technique I learned from uh, Tested on using uh, cotton to kind of build up around a skull and kind of make it look like decayed flesh. Never tried it before, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is my zombie mostly together. It's hard to get in one frame here, but uh, I think it came out okay for a one-night job. It's not too bad. I did make him a stupid, goofy eyeball like popping out of its socket up there, too. Just to add to the weirdness of it, I guess, or to make it a little more cartoony. So I decided to go ahead and pick up Dead by Daylight, which I keep accidentally calling Dead by Dawn. Mostly because I have the need to play video games as every slasher ever, I guess. So last night I went to a local haunted house here in Jacksonville called Warehouse 31 and that was kind of one of my goals for this Halloween season was to hit some of the local haunted houses. Lately, in the past several years, I've really never only gone to Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando which is of course a much bigger budget thing than anything local and I always just kind of wanted to see what was here closer to home and this was literally right down the street. I mean it's closer to my house than where I go to work every day. So it was a pretty short drive down there. We got there right as they were opening. Like actually they hadn't even opened yet when we were buying tickets and everything. So we were probably some of the first people in. It was me and my friend Colin. And they advertised that they have four separate houses all in the one location, which was in like a strip mall center that's just kind of like fallen on hard times and has nothing in it anymore. So there's Boss Bobo's Carnival, which is like a clown themed house. There's The Swamp, which is like a New Orleans voodoo themed one, similar to what we had at Halloween Horror Nights this year. There was Mr. Tasty's Meat Factory, which is like a butcher slaughterhouse with humans in it. And then there was The Fear Lab, which was some generic kind of sort of Resident Evil without zombies place. I'm not even really sure what that was. My assumption was that you'd be able to walk in and pick from any of these four houses, but what actually you do is you get in line for the carnival one first, and the houses are all just daisy chained together. So you go out of one, then you go into the next one. I don't even think there was an option to turn back after you completed a house. You had to go through all of them to get out. So the clown one was by far the biggest house they had. You spent a lot of time in there. They actually send everybody through in groups. So 
it could be as few as like one or two people or it could be like a group of you know a bunch of friends together going it probably helps space out the scare actors a little better there's nothing very great about the clown house i'm kind of sick and tired of the creepy clown thing there were some standouts in it the actors definitely get more in your face than they do at like halloween horror nights i mean they would literally be centimeters away from you they can't touch you but they did basically you know that trick with your younger sibling when you're in the car for a long time where it's like i'm not touching you but my finger is like right there and i'm more or less just touching you yeah it's basically that game they had some people who actually had some i don't know parkour skills or whatever they would end up jumping around on barrels and different things in the environment so that kind of added to the display of everything they had kind of your standard clown stuff just random creepy looking carnival crap they had the rotating tunnels that are you know common for fun houses they had a lot of that what I call the Joel Schumacher paint. It's really just that day glow black light paint, but I also associate it with the scenes in like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin where like there's whole gangs decked out in that paint. And there are these other sections where they had like these like black inflatable tubes that would kind of narrow down the corridor so you'd have to squeeze through the corridor to get through. There were several places, and I think in all the houses this was true, where the actor was supposed to stop you in a room and like engage you for a while to help keep the spacing of the house going. The clown house was the only time when that really ever worked because the actress actually like blocked the way out. She actually stood in front of the door and wouldn't let us leave until she was done with whatever her spiel was, which I couldn't really hear over the rest of the sounds of the haunted house. But I guess all that spacing things out didn't really work so well because within a very short amount of time, we caught up to the group that was ahead of us by accident. I guess they were taking their time and we were kind of just like breezing right through the house. And we got to this room that was pitch black. It's actually like a series of corridors you have to kind of Z through. And if I was the front of the line, I probably would have just been feeling the walls trying to figure out where I was going. But trying to follow a group of people, it was really awkward because I didn't want to like reach out and, you know, feel my way around the place and end up hitting people in the face or something. But it was just really difficult to navigate. And then he'd spit you out at the end to this room that I thought was actually kind of cool. They had a bunch of like pool noodles hanging from the ceiling, almost remind me of like a car wash or something you have to push your way through all these pool noodles but they didn't do anything with it nobody pops out at you it's just oh there's pool noodles everywhere the whole clown thing like i said is played out to me and just overall not the best thing to do but it's an easy scare for a lot of people i guess then there was the swamp the voodoo themed house you start off inside of like a voodoo themed cabin there's like a witch doctor there that kind of talks to you in the first room then they let you out into the swamp and there's people in like voodoo costumes and people in those like ghillie suits very similar to what universal did just on a very smaller budget but they actually had like these weird like didgeridoo vocalization sound effects going on that i actually thought were kind of cool they played with the light really well they'd have like these like green lasers pointed in different directions it made it feel claustrophobic without actually putting a bunch of things there and spending a lot of money on production value outside of just a couple lights and they had uh, sections where you get on the floor it actually be like a rickety floor so it would sway side to side depending on how you were standing on it and i thought that was pretty cool it definitely gave it a more visceral feel walking through that but it's a super short house like just as i was really getting into it and i really liked it i think i'll go ahead and say it was my favorite house of the four it was over just super fast and that was disappointing the next house was the meat factory starts off there's a guy like inside of i guess it was almost like a general store he's reading you off the menu of things which is all like human burgers and toe nuggets and things like that and then eventually he lets you in and it's kind of exactly what you'd expect it's a meat processing plant that looks like it was shut down there's people chopping up human remains there's people coming at you with belt sanders and meat cleavers and they have pig masks on but overall i think it was actually decently well done they used a part of the building that already had like some stairwells in it and stuff to try to add to their production without spending more money there's actually a part where you're actually weaving through the slaughterhouse like there's people cutting up meat and you're going in between the different tables there's places is where there's like human corpses hanging like cattle in the slaughterhouse freezer and once again i thought this one was decent for what it was they did a very good job bringing that to fruition and then last was fear lab and like i said at the beginning i'm not really sure what the theme was it was very resident evil it felt like they went to that section of spirit halloween that has all the electrical gags and stuff there was a lot of display cases with like deformed fetuses in it and people in lab coats with blood splattered on it, and people in hospital scrubs and i think there was some part of it that was supposed to be like a mental institution but the other parts were like scientific 
like experiment type things. It was very confusing. I never really got what it was outside of like a general creepy hospital thing going on. And honestly, I can't really even say much about it. Like, it's already left my memory just by how nothing it was. It, there were no really good tricks in it. The Clown House at least had some good tricks to it. This just didn't really have anything. If nothing else, I could say, like the other two before it, it was pretty short. I think the Voodoo House, being my favorite, was the shortest house of them all, which really sucks. And I think the Meatpacking one was probably the second shortest. Or maybe tied with Fear Labs. I'm not entirely sure. So those are the four. It was okay. Basically, I paid 25 bucks to get in, which ended up being about a dollar a minute. It did not take long to get through this. You could go back and go through them all over again. I had no desire to. It wasn't entertaining enough the first time. I didn't really think it would be that much more entertaining a second time. But I'm glad I went just to be able to enjoy some more local horror and to do something actually horror related in this month of Halloween since I've been doing more robot stuff than anything else.